All right. Uh, it is Monday, October 9th. Uh, today I'm going to do my first application of pre-emergent. I'll do two of those. So let me get this out of the way. Uh, first thing is I have all fescue. Um, I've mowed this five or six times. So it's plenty safe doing this. If you have overseeded with Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass, do not do this. I don't care if you've mowed it 15 times. Don't do it. Those grasses take, uh, the root system takes longer to establish and it's just, you know, they're weak for just being seeded. So do not do pre-emergent if you have overseeded with Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass. So, all right. So I've been marking a few spots here. You can see the flags. Um, there's plenty of grass there. I just seeded a little bit more. It was a little bit thinner over in there, but it just takes longer to establish and grow being that's a shady spot. So got a few of these spots, but everything else is good to go. It's been mowed plenty, had plenty cut off of it. So I'm getting ready to uh, start mixing here and I will show you what I'm using and the rates I'm using and then we'll go spray it. Just remember, do not spray pre-emergent on newly overseeded Kentucky bluegrass or perennial ryegrass. Fescue only if it's been mowed three times good. Also, uh, I forgot to mention uh, yesterday, you see I got this marked off. Yesterday, I uh, run my aerovator. I mentioned this in another video. I run my aerovator along this perimeter from that piece of uh, erosion blanket right around to about right here. Uh, you can see what it looks like. I seeded it at uh, three pounds per thousand. So that's one reason why I got this marked off. And there was a good amount of grass here, but it was really, really compacted, so. Uh, that spot down there that's got the erosion blanket over it, little spot. It actually was plenty of grass there, like that. And stupid me, I was spraying the other day and I slowed down too fast with my sprayer and it slid and it tore up a big old chunk. So it happens, but uh, we'll get back to uh, doing the pre-emergent. So this is what I mix in. Um, it's a 100 gallon tank. It's basically, I mean, it is a skid sprayer, but it's on wheels. Uh, I used to use this before I got my ride on sprayer. So I used to pull the hose, but uh, I, now I just mix up my product in this and I transfer it from this over to my uh, steel green ride on. Uh, it holds 50 gallons and it takes 64 gallons to, uh, spray my yard at two gallons per thousand so i'll fill up the steel green and then when it gets you know halfway down or something i'll come back up and fill the rest of it back up but that's what i mix in uh, it's got really good agitation so here is what i'm going to be spraying uh this is the pre-emergent both both of these are pre-emergent uh, this one's for your grassy weeds that does list some broadleaf weeds. This is broadleaf weeds, no grassy weeds. So anything like clover or uh, um, Carolina geranium, just any broadleaf weeds, this pretty much covers it all. Chickweed. So this right here is Dithia Pier. This is my pre-emergent choice for the fall. 
in my personal opinion, I think this works better for preventing Poana. And that's the reason why I'm doing pre-emergent. Uh, I've been doing this for four years, uh, seeding early into August, very first September, and then mowing at three good times and applying pre-emergent. Haven't had any issues whatsoever. Uh, very, very little POA. Uh, this is not gonna stop POA trivialis unless there's seeds in the ground. Uh, so what does a pre-emergent do? Well, a pre-emergent is gonna stop seeds from establishing. They're gonna germinate, uh, the roots are gonna hit the barrier and it's gonna burn them up. So, uh, Poanya, it normally germinates, you know, with an average soil temperature of 70 degrees and below. Well, I'm about a week late, but uh, average soil temperature for five days is 68 degrees here, uh, but it's not all gonna germinate at one time. Uh, so anything's better than nothing at any time. Uh, some's going to germinate in the fall. Some's going to germinate in the spring. So, you know, me being a week late, I'm not really concerned about it. My yard's plenty thick also. I've even done this on a brand new lawn renovation from bare dirt. I've mowed it three times and sprayed pre-emergent on it. Not a problem. Both, both of these. Uh, so this right here, I will go out with a split app. It'd be 0.55 ounces per thousand. 0.55 ounces per thousand square feet. Um, this gallery, this is a dry flowable. So you have to measure this with a scale. Uh, I'll do this at 0.38 ounces per thousand. And I'm going to run some impulse. It's just a biostimulant to help with stress. That's amino acids, uh, salicylic acid. I'm going to mix in some kelp. I'll run. I'll, I'll run that at three ounces per thousand. Kelp plant. It's kelp, humic, fulvic. It's another one just to help with stress. I'll go out with four ounces per thousand on that. We all know kelp helps push his roots. So that's what I'm trying to do in the fall. And this is a wetting agent slash soil penetrant. So I'm gonna spray this with it. One, because it's low pH. Uh, the pH on it is like one. So Dithia Pier pre-emergent it likes a low pH and also this has a penetrant in it so when I water it in tonight it's gonna help pull that pre-emergent down into the soil it's also a wetting agent and it's been extremely extremely dry here so any little help I can get with keeping moisture in the soil I'm all for it so uh, we'll get to mixing this up. All right, so this is how you would measure out uh, dry flowable granulars, WDG granulars, anything that's granular that's meant to be sprayed. Uh, you have to measure it out in dry ounces. So, uh, and, and no, you don't need a scale like this. This was not purchased whatsoever for grass related. I just had it and that's what I use, and it is very, very accurate. The wind actually moves it. So I'm going to tear this out. And uh, so I need, at 0.38 ounces per thousand square feet, I need 12.16 ounces of this gallery. So I might need to probably more just use the half jug here first. So I'm going to pour that in there rid of that so we're at two ounces
12.16. So, and folks, use gloves when you do this. I mean, this stuff is not, you know, it's, it's dangerous. You need to be wearing gloves when you do this. I should be wearing a mask. You've seen the, the dust off of this stuff coming up, but you know, for the sake of this video and, and me talking, I didn't wear a mask, but make sure you wear gloves and don't be breathing this stuff in. All right, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, got all my stuff pre-mixed or pre-measured out. So anytime you're mixing, you always want to mix your dry flowables or WDG first. You want to have good agitation. Uh, you can pre-mix it in a jug, shake it up real good, or you can use a, you know, a drill and a paint stirrer and uh, mix it while you're pouring it in your backpack sprayer. But, you know, I showed you what I mix with or how I'm mixing it in the sprayer. So, I'm going to pour it in here. See the agitation. See the going to town. Let that uh, agitate up a little bit, and uh, I'll go ahead and pour the rest of it in there. There ain't no need to film that. You know what that looks like. We're going to get the spray in here, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.